all right friends so welcome to another video from shomu's biology and in this video lecture we are going to talk about another antibiotic mode of action mechanism of action of cephalosporin so what is cephalosporin class of antibiotics what are the example of cephalosporin antibiotics and how cephalosporin antibiotics work mechanism of action of cephalosporin antibiotics uses of cephalosporin as well as we'll be talking about the side effects of cephalosporin antibiotics so let's begin the first things first is the general properties of cephalosporin antibiotic and the cephalosporins are class of beta lactam antibiotics so basically their mode of action will be similar to that of the penicillin class of antibiotic because penicillin was a type of beta lactam antibiotics right so cephalosporin are a very common antibiotic that are used in variety of broad spectrum infections okay so they are broad spectrum in nature that means they are active against gram positive and gram negative bacteria and the spectrum of dosage can be applied against various kinds of bacteria okay so that's a good thing about it and we use cephalosporin nowadays even more often doctor use it even more often because uh, earlier the penicillin kind of antibiotics are getting resistant uh, so right now the cephalosporins are quite used originally derived from fungus acrimonium which was previously known as cephalosporium fungus so that's why the antibiotics name is cephalosporin together with cephalosporin uh, cephamycins they constitute a subgroup of beta lactam antibiotics called cefem so if you put cephalosporin and cephamycins together they will be termed as a beta lactam antibiotic known as cefem kind of antibiotic okay so under cefem kind we have cephamycins and cephalosporins both are beta lactam type that can that means beta lactam antibiotics mechanism of action is basically to inhibit the synthesis of cell wall or peptidoglycan structure in bacterial cell okay so discovered in 1945 and first sold in 1964 now let's move on to talk about the classification of that so basically uh, the classification we can say that this cephalosporin and uh, antibiotics they disrupt the synthesis of peptidoglycan layer forming the bacterial cell wall and as they break the cell wall structure formation because they disrupt the peptidoglycan structure ultimately it will uh, cause the loss of cell integrity for the bacteria and bacteria will die that's the idea so what are the classification of cephalosporin uh, cell, like uh, this particular uh, antibiotic type okay so the classification we start with first generation second generation third generation fourth generation like that okay so first generation is uh, cefadroxyl okay cefazolin cefazidone so basically cefazolin was kind of common in first generation so we have this different nomenclature of first to second third fourth generation how exactly i'm going to say it later but second generation antibiotic afterwards is cefaclor cefuroxime okay cefotetan ceprozil third generation cephalosporins are cefixime very common ceftriaxone very common and rest of them are also there but these two cefixime and ceftriaxone are very very common kind and fourth generation is cefepime and cefquinone okay and the last one is fifth generation cephalosporin ceftobiprol and ceftra ceftarolin okay as well as ceftolozen these are fifth generation cephalosporins so basically what do we mean by these different kinds of generations of cephalosporin let me tell you that the idea is you know uh, the more we are moving from first generation to the fifth generation the more they are becoming effective against the gram negatives okay so they are active against both gram positive bacteria as well as gram negative bacteria okay but mostly when we are moving from first generation to the fifth generation we can clearly see the gram positive bacteria the chance of killing gram positive bacteria is remaining kind of constant but effectivity against the gram negative bacteria was reduced earlier in the first and second generation then slowly after second generation second third fourth fifth these cephalosporin antibiotics are very good against the gram negative bacteria as well the reason cephalosporins are mostly effective against gram positive at the generation 1 was that uh, in gram positive and gram negative bacteria in both the bacteria we have peptidoglycan layer. they have peptidoglycan layer okay okay they have this peptidoglycan layer but the peptidoglycan layer is more uh, predominant and more what we can say uh, structurally more strong uh, and more much required for the gram positive bacteria than the gram negative bacteria that's why it's more uh, of a, a effective against the gram positive bacteria at the beginning but as we are modifying these antibiotics 
these antibiotics becoming much effective against the gram negative bacteria as well because we now know that in gram negative bacteria also the peptidoglycan layer is there although thin but it's there but that thin layer can also be uh, degraded by the later generations and one more thing regarding uh, this pep this uh, different generation scheme is that the effectivity against anaerobic bacteria basically the effectivity against the anaerobic bacteria is kind of reduced at the very first generation it was there uh, and second generation it was maximum but slowly it's being reduced we don't know how exactly the fifth generation uh, cephalosporin act against anaerobic bacteria but yeah they are very much effective against uh, mrsa strain the fifth generation of cephalosporin is kept alive against only the mrsa multi-drug resistant staphylococcus aureus infection apart from that the pseudomonas infection can be treated uh, by the fourth generation cephalosporin antibiotic that is cefepime and the third generation cephalosporin particularly ceftazidim okay only ceftazidim these two can only effective against pseudomonas rest of them are not okay while the only antibiotic there that is fifth generation cephalosporin ceftadrolin is effective against the mrsa that is multi-drug resistance staphylococcus aureus rest of them are not so basically when we are moving towards right now we use uh, first generation and third generation cephalosporins uh, mostly as well as second generation first second and third basically mostly second and third generation of uh, cephalosporin antibiotics against the broad spectrum bacterial range okay what is the mechanism of action remember i told you mechanism of action it inhibits the cell wall synthesis by blocking the cross-linking of nag and nam by inhibiting the transpeptidase enzyme okay by the presence of beta lactam ring so if i show you the picture uh, you can clearly see that these are two different components of the bacterial peptidoglycan structure one is nag n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid nag and nam so both has this kind of a polypeptide structure coming in from nam and and from nag so basically from this nam this is the let's say the fragment number one this is fragment number two so both these fragments need to be connected together and this connection is known as cross linking of peptidoglycan layer so here nam with peptide another nam with peptide and they will interact and they have a cross linking and this cross linking is known as transpeptidase reaction this transpeptidase reaction is carried out by transpeptidase enzyme and uh, the example of this enzyme is known as uh, cephalosporin binding protein it's also known as cbp this enzyme cephalosporin binding protein they are essentially the transpeptidase enzyme so basically this beta lactam ring that is present basically uh, the structure of this cephalosporin is the beta lactam ring and this beta lactam ring c means cephalosporin here is going to inhibit it's going to bind to this transpeptidase and inhibit the transpeptide reaction okay so peptidal transfer reaction is broken and as a result cross-linking is halted so no cross-linking and as a result uh, there is no cross-linking means no peptidoglycan structure no peptidoglycan means no cell wall integrity and the cell will die this is how the cell dies and this is the mechanism used by penicillin type of antibiotic which we call as a beta lactam type of antibiotic now some bacteria can develop an enzyme beta lactamase that can degrade the beta lactam ring as a result of which uh, the antibiotic is rendered inactive so in that case we need to use accessory components okay to prevent the beta lactamase activities okay and that is generally is clavulinic acid clavulinic acid or potassium clavulinate is a chemical compound which is going to inhibit the activity of beta lactamase thus if we add the clavulinic acid along with if we add it along with beta lactam then we can make sure that yes our antibiotic is going to work is going to kill the bacteria by destroying the cell wall structure uh, inhibiting the formation of peptidoglycan layer okay that's why you can clearly see that all, all this penicillin type of antibiotic or cephalosporin antibiotics are there particularly penicillin type antibiotics you will see that uh, it's written as uh, penicillin or whatever antibiotic plus clavulinic acid like that okay so for example augmentin is one one example of antibiotic that carries both all right in this animated segment we are going to see the mechanism of action of beta lactam antibiotic so any of the antibiotic that carries the beta lactam ring be it penicillin be it uh, carbapenems be it uh, cephalosporins they all belong to this category 
and they prevent the synthesis of peptidoglycan layer and if the peptidoglycan layer is not produced in bacteria the cell wall will not be strong enough to hold uh, and maintain the structure of bacteria and as a result the cell will die so what is the mechanism of beta lactam antibiotic let's look at this this is uh, the structure of uh, let's say peptidoglycan component which is made up with two things one is a nag and nam n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid and particularly in n acetyl muramic acid we can see the amino acids are connected to each other so the amino acids are with different color code red green blue red are d alanine in this case and at the end of this nam structures there are these two d alanine residues connected so these are the alanine residues the red color d alanine residue and in order to build the peptidoglycan structure in order to build the peptidoglycan structure this d alanine need to have a proper cross linking event and for that they require a transpeptidase enzyme known as pbp penicillin binding protein okay so this penicillin binding protein brings itself and interacts to the d alanine and what it does it cleaves one of this d alanine out okay and it brings another similar set of uh, nag nam structure to cross link and this nag nam structure will be in place and transpeptidase reaction is catalyzed by the transpeptidation is catalyzed by the transpeptidase or pbb protein and a peptide bond is formed and this concludes the cross linking of the peptidoglycan layer so this is a normal way of how the peptidoglycan layer is cross linked now what happens when we treat this bacteria with beta lactam antibiotic so here comes the penicillin binding protein and here is the beta lactam antibiotic the beta lactam antibiotic is going to bind to the transpeptidase active site of this penicillin binding protein and what it will do is that it will not allow the cross linking event so now this pbp will go and interact to the alanine and it will not allow the further cross linking event so peptidoglycan cross linking will be inhibited and as a result no cross linking as a result no cell wall structure formed as a result the bacteria will die now what are the clinical uses uh, the medical uses here is in the respiratory tract infection urinary tract infection soft tissue infection so basically we can use this cephalosporin antibiotic against gram negative organisms very clearly and most of the time it's very very effective against all this okay cefazolin is used in surgical prophylaxis particularly and in gonorrhea cefragzone is used in meningitis third generation uh, cephalosporins are used trifoid alternative to ciprofloxacin is used so nosocomial infections which are infections acquired from hospital environments can also be treated with third generation cephalosporin antibiotics and they are also effective against mixed aerobic and anaerobic infections uh, in cancers particularly third generation cephalosporin so basically nowadays we use third generation cephalosporin most often along with second generation is also used not first generation but these two are used and fourth and fifth generation are uh, particularly specified and kept for specific infections like pseudomonas uh, as well as the mrs infections so these are all medical uses and we also have dental uses in dental infections alternative to penicillin we can use first generation cephalexin okay and uh, cefadroxyl gram positive against the gram positive aerobic uh, bacteria second generation as, as example cefaclor cefuroxime acetyl is also used for oral anaerobic against the oral anaerobic infections okay particularly cefuroxime acetyl type and uh, the cefalexin cefadroxyl uh, are also used for prophylactic infections or prophylaxis okay so these are all the clinical uses of cephalosporin antibiotics now let's talk about the side effects of cephalosporin antibiotics that leads to stomach upset nausea vomiting diarrhea yeast infection or oral thrush okay as well as dizziness and finally uh, the caution in pregnancy this is something really important the cephalosporin used in pregnant women may increase the likelihood of specific birth defect in the baby one study found that use of cephalosporin antibiotic in early pregnancy may link to heart defects in a newborn baby that is what's going on with cephalosporin antibiotics so that is all about the cephalosporin antibiotic and basically we know it's effective against aerobics 
uh, aerobic microorganism and aerobic microorganism and the different classification scheme of first generation second generation third generation fourth generation and fifth generation cephalosporin we also talked about the role of third generation fourth and fifth generation cephalosporin and we know the fifth generation cephalosporin antibiotic can go against mrsa so these are all important properties so if you like this video about the cephalosporin antibiotic mechanism of action and cephalosporin antibiotics detail then hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye